We've got Damon in Glasgow. How are you? <coughs> Hello, Damon? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's try that, Hello. Damon. Damon, you there? Yeah. Hey, Hello. how are you? Not bad, how are you guys? Good. Um, first time caller here. Um, I've actually emailed you guys a few times. I got a, a very lengthy reply from, I believe it was Tracy, um, a good while back about dealing with the default position of the supernatural uh, from a theistic point of view rather than an atheistic point of view. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I also sent an email to you about, uh, almost about two years ago. I started the Atheist uh, Society, or what I call the Free Thinker Society at the University in Essex in, in England. All right, congratulations. Well, thank you. I haven't been involved with it since I graduated over a year ago, but I, hopefully it's doing well without me. I that, was just that's something you should probably check on because one of the things about university mm -hmm. groups is they tend to die off as yeah. as you know we lose members for graduation. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I emailed actually just today because I was thinking about the thing about calling up the show, so I thought I'd, um, the um, the person I left in charge, uh, I sent her an email. Uh, she hasn't replied back to me yet, but um, but hopefully she will at some point. Um, I was just it's um, I the main thing I wanted to call in about was how. In excruciatingly frustrating, frustrating it's get trying to argue with people who have a theistic position when their entire argument is based on, oh, you don't know for sure, ergo, you can't disprove my position, therefore you are closed-minded for not accepting the possibility that something could be real. Yeah. It's, it's just it's ludicrous, and it is, it's, it's a constant, you know, it's a constant headache in your head. How the hell can you get around that kind of circular reasoning. Well, you can't disprove it, so ergo. And I've tried using arguments like, well, I can't disprove the existence of an invisible pink unicorn, but they're like, oh, well, that's just silly. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. how is your position any different to that? It's <laughs> not. It's just as silly. And, that, and, and, I, and I'm one who's actually fine with pointing that out. One thing is, is I, I haven't tried this, but it might be worth a try, and that is to find out, let's define exactly what they mean by close-minded. Close because it may be the case that by their definition of closed-minded, I am, in fact, closed-minded to claims that aren't supported by evidence. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to believe a claim that's not supported by an evidence, uh, or by sufficient evidence. And if that makes me closed-minded in their definition, then I'll own up to that. Um, but there's a difference between being uh, uh, not willing to believe something that's not supported by evidence and asserting that the thing is false and cannot be supported by evidence. Those are... Those are two completely different types of closed-mindedness. Well, I mean, I understand that, but there's also the thing <coughs> at the same time, I can't stand this, this projecting choice. that you get wow. from theists, like, oh, well, you're just as, you're, you're just as closed-minded, you're just as absolute as any creationist or any Christian or any Muslim or whatever, it's, because you have a position which you are not budging from. That's just... I'm not defending something that requires a burden of proof from my hand. I'm asking you to provide evidence for your position. Yeah. And again, it's like, oh, well, it's just the same thing, basically. It's, it's like a constant wall of idiocy you're trying to break through, but there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and it's yeah. demonstrably false to assert this thing that you're just as dogmatic. No, uh, there's no dogmatic assertion here at all. And uh, just in response to the previous caller who was saying, because um, I, was actually, I was actually raised in Greece, which is a very um, conservatively Christian country, We've got forced prayers every morning at school, which the only way you can get exempt from is if your parents ask for an exemption. And when they ask for an exemption, they actually have to give a reason, and usually reasons we don't believe isn't good enough. You have to prove that you're actually a supporter or been raised in a different religion. So unless you're actually of another Christian denomination, a Jewish or Muslim, you're not actually supposed to be allowed off the, um, the prayer. And wow. the only religious instruction in school is um, Christian Orthodox dogma. There's no, compar there's no comparison between religions. And as someone who I've never really had, um, I mean, you know, some people ask you, when did you lose your faith? Well, from my position, I, was, I never had any faith to lose. I, what I did was, was I lost my fear of damnation in hell. Like what you were saying earlier about yeah. some person who's actually an atheist over 10 years or so, but they still can't shake this notion of hell. That was, I think that was my only, that was the only thing that kept me believing or fearing until I was about 13 or 14. Then when I finally lost that, I don't know how, I just honestly can't remember how it happened. I just lost that, and ever since then it's been a lot easier to cope with people, you know, accusing you of being a bad person or saying, well, you're going to burn in hell and so on, how do you feel about that? But growing up in a country like Greece, thankfully I left when I was 16, but up until that point, <coughs> going to school, fighting with teachers, because especially with the religious instruction teachers, they, they had absolutely no respect for anyone who had a different, different point of view. My religious instruction teacher actually called my parents and asked permission to have me exercised. Wow. wow. 
Yes, apparently I was so bad because I was pointing out the flaws in what she was saying that, in her opinion, uh, evolution was just some people found some skulls of monkeys that looked like that looked like human, and that's the whole thing. Yeah, and that's I what you meant. Point out to her that it was more than that. I mean, yeah. of course, I didn't have the knowledge on evolution that I do now because evolution isn't taught in Greek school. Yeah. Um, so whatever you had to find out, you had to find out from the library. And um, when I tried to point out, she was just saying, "Well, obviously the devil's gotten hold of you. I need to speak with your parents. This is really important." Yeah. Now, and, and I'll say that I, uh, I love going to Greece, having been there a couple times, one of my favorite places to visit. I had no idea that, that the school situation was so kind of batshit crazy. Um, I, I you know, Granted, I'm not up on, on Greek law or anything, uh, but I, I think it's worth pointing out that if you feel the need to protect your religion by making it mandatory, you're probably admitting that there's no actual truth there, that there's nothing there that would actually convince somebody. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I hold that position as well, but the Greek excuse to that is, oh, well, we've, um, we're defined as being Greek Orthodox. But mm -hmm. the thing is, the way religion, because that's what you were saying, that some people lose their religion because it's no longer relevant to their daily lives. Right. Well, the Greek Orthodox Church has managed to circumvent that and actually get people to become members of the church, even if they have absolutely no belief whatsoever. I mean, all my friends, all my closest friends at least, have very little belief, if any. I mean, I, in the worst case, I call them deists. None of them are theists, and none of them are Christian by the street definition of any church that I, I'm aware of. But for them, oh yes, when my parents die, I have to bury them and have to give them a Christian burial. When, when, my, ch when my children are born, I have to have them baptized. I have to get them their, holy, their first Holy Communion. I'm going to get married in the church. So it's this is a, this is all just about social obligations. Then, integral part of Greek society and Greek culture and identification. People just do it as oh well, I'm Greek, ergo I have to be Christian. And even if they don't believe in any of the supernatural entities and stories, and they'll actually defend that position when they think people are being anti-Greek, not anti-Christian anyway. Oh, if yeah, you don't it's like, a it's a con it's a conflation that that kind of borders on jingoism yeah. where you're associating your nationality and your heritage with a particular religion <clears throat> and we've seen it in the United States as well where yeah. you know this is God's Christian nation and uh, or Judeo Christian if we don't want to you know yeah. irk the the Jewish population and if you're a true American you're you know you follow this 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 and this um, it's yeah you're going to see that all over the place. It's in some places, I guess, it's just a little more embarrassing uh, and harmful—not just embarrassing, but harmful than others. Mm. But it's just—I I just thought it was—it uh, it was because, of course, you know, when you're saying about oh, the, the previous caller was it from Italy, I believe. Well, the previous, the previous caller call was uh, Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Oh, Bulgaria. Okay, well, neighboring countries. But the, the whole point is because um, I recently—I think it was on the news. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, that um, the European Parliament, after a decision based in uh, after a decision in Strasbourg, had forced Italy to remove um, compulsory prayer from schools. And now, um, I believe the um, the Greek atheist community is trying to get the same position, uh, the same decision applied in Greece. Therefore, children are naturally exempt from um, any religious instruction or indoctrination, into, you know, unless they specifically request it, or the parents have to do. Of course, everyone's up in arms about that, because they realize that, <coughs> oh, well, actually, no one's going to foresee us our religion. We're going to have to get off our own backsides and, you know, try and, try and be Christians ourselves. Cause it, so it's also this position that we're de facto default, but, you know, we don't really want to bother with it too much. We'll only get up in arms if we feel someone is threatening us about it. Yeah, my, my, I think my position pretty much with regard to education, and on that note, Damon, I, I got to let you go because we've got yeah, all lines yeah, set up in like 12 minutes. But I think my de facto position on this is that um, parents are, are granted some autonomy, mm -hmm. some rights as to what they teach their children at home. But when it comes to the schools, um, nobody, neither parents nor teachers, should be able to dictate that you're going right. to take this particular religious instruction as part of your schooling. In, in, in schools, we should be teaching them things that are, I don't know, valuable and tied to reality. Um, and I realize that, you know, I'm not going to convince anybody, certainly not in, a, in an Orthodox nation, um, that that's the case. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason why churches have Sunday schools and, and things like that yeah. and other religious instruction. And that's because you can keep that in this realm and in the, the actual educational realm, you just, you know, apart from comparative religion studies and, and, and voluntary courses that opt, are opt-in instead of opt-out, um, it shouldn't be an issue. 
But on that note, I gotta let you go. So thanks okay, a lot for the call. Just one last, just to let you know the position about uh, how the education system works in Greece. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if it happens in other countries, but Greece, uh, the the Greek bishopry actually has their foot in the education yeah. department, and every book that's issued in the Greek public school actually says on behalf of the Department of, of uh, ed Education and Religious Studies. Greece. Yeah, so and, and that's there's that's no going to be the duality between religion and education in Greece. It's just it's under one heading. So. Yeah, and that's going to be the case in any nation that doesn't have a proper se separation of church and state. Any nation with with a uh, you know a, a strong tie between the religion and the government. Um, and it's something that you know people have to actually work to change. And whether or not it changes anytime soon is uh, doubtful, I think. But okay. yeah. thanks a lot, well, David. Thank you very guys. Thank you very much for taking my call, guys. Cheers. Thank you.